This is Word Radio. On this episode of Warbird Radio, we continue our conversation on safety. As Safety Month wraps up, we've saved the best for last. Michelle Pelletier, who is the founder of airshowsafety.com, a website that in itself has become one of the most innovative ideas in the airshow industry in the last few years. A way to communicate your performer safety data to the authorities before you ever even arrive. Michelle, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. No, thanks for having me, Matt. I appreciate it. You're a former snowbird. You're an aircraft mechanic. You're a a whole bunch of things, but everybody in the International Council of Air Shows knows you by your call sign, Pumpkin, which is uh, when they they meet you and they have the guts to ask you, because what are you, seven feet, two inches or something? You're You're a huge guy. Yes, six name, one, but uh, oh come on, you're way over six one. There's no way you're only six one. <laughs> or I, well, uh, I just tower over you. That's all. <laughs> but uh, it's the size of the head was seven and three quarters when I was getting fitted for my snowbird helmet. They said uh, <laughs> we keep taking the padding layers out. The next uh, stop is the garbage can. So that Jesus pumpkin, oh, you got a head on you like a pumpkin. So it's stuck. You don't have a choice when you get a call sign in the Air Force. If you don't like it, to make it worse. That's right. The RCAF uh, is has been was your home for a long time as a uh, as a technician working on the airplanes uh, that they that they fly up there and our neighbors to the north there from the United States where we're at. But uh, you know this show goes all over the world and the idea of a website like AirshowSafety.com, which you started, it's brilliant. I mean, I work air shows and a lot of warbird operators, uh, folks who uh, lovingly take care of these things. They deal with this kind of stuff all the time because very, very, very few people know how to get a P-51 open who are at a fire department at a major airport today or a military base or anywhere. And, and it, it goes deeper than that. It's that this resource that you're able to provide now allows them to see it months, in some cases even a year, uh, before the actual sure. event happens. They can go on your website. Again, it's airshowsafety.com. And they can download the extraction documents. They can watch a video. Uh, this is a great resource. How did it all come about? It all came about uh, over a decade ago, and it's been out for about since 2017. And it started with a prominent accident of a very close friend and a steerman. And it just made me, something clicked one day, and we started this PDF, which was a great start to extraction information. And I went one step later with it, a little more forward thinking. I started doing videos with my telephone. And it started with Mike Wiskus and uh, Brad Wurston and a Serbanyenko. And the feedback I got, even myself, I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's like the firefighter walking up to the airplane, not rushing, pushing the buttons, understanding how to open the canopy, how to take the straps off. And I always try and make each pilot strap in so it's basically the meat and potatoes of what a firefighter would see and and my goal behind it was is to increase safety awareness but also to help educate and spread the word because it does not hurt that you matt jolly are a great announcer and radio announcer and, and and a host but you also fly but what if you're at an airport and you watch a few of my videos and someone just has a little accident, nothing major, but you can help them get them out of their aircraft because maybe their wrist is broke or some education, especially if it's free and you can watch it virtually on your phone, on your PC, on your tablet, on our YouTube channel, which we have over 80 different aircraft now. Um, it, it, it's free. It's there. We don't charge nothing for it. It's just become a mission of ours to help spread the word. So here's what I want to do. I want to encourage you if you're listening to this right now and you're an aircraft operator, you got to go log on to airshowsafety.com because what Pumpkin just said was really, really critical here. If the airplane is not listed up there that you are operating, then go ahead, reach out to Michelle, take the time, make the video, because it literally mm-hmm. could save your life or somebody else's because you have people watching these videos really from all over the world now. Absolutely. And when you say record the video, record the clips, hold your phone. I have to say this. Hold your phone horizontally, record the clips, 
send us the clips, whether it's in the Dropbox link or however you want to do it. We do all the editing for free. We'll publish it on our YouTube channel. Not only that, we'll give you a custom QR code with, and a decal graphic that you can make into a decal or send to your local fly-in if you're going to go fly from one airport to another for a fly-in or an air show or even static nothing says that something can't happen on landing even though you're static the more information the crash fire rescue people the cfr people have the better shape you're in and maybe less time you'll spend in the hospital if not any at all because that person has already looked it over and watched it several times. It's, it's just, a, it's a no-brainer. I love the idea of a QR code for rescue. And we, you know, we th- mm-hmm. kind of joke about that, uh, thinking like, well, what is the fireman going to do? Run up and scan the QR code. But it, it, it goes deeper than that. It's a way that when you arrive uh, to any airport, you can say, hey, by the way, uh, you know, here you go. Because oftentimes at an aerial event, at a big fly-in, at a air show for sure, uh, the CFR guy is going to be walking around when you get there. You might have a ramp check by the FAA or whatever, mm-hmm. but there, there's always an interest. The fire department at any air show is going to have a representative always available at air show center at the control point. So, you know, hey, this is an easy thing to do. Walk up, hand it to the representative from the fire department, from the rescue squad, and say, hey, look, I'm going to be getting out of here Sunday. I just want you to have this before I leave. You know, nothing... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing easier than exactly. that, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, and then I suggested uh, I had Red Bull here one year and I had Aaron Fitzgerald who flies the helicopter upside down. And I we had created a video two weeks before he came in because he had dropped the helicopter off. And I sent him a QR code. I said, make this into a decal, put it somewhere on the aircraft. And I said, when you've done your crash fire rescue brief, say, hey, who has a cell phone to the firefighters? And they all put their hands up. And he opens his back engine doors to scan that. Doof. And that he said, the whole briefing I just told you is there for you on their, on your phone. And he's been using it over. He'll text me and smile. He's like, Pumpkin, oh, my God, the people love your stuff. Or Pumpkin, I showed up at a show, and the air boss already has everything printed out. Again, we do it for free, and it, it hits my heart hard. We do it for free because it's a passion. I'm, I'm tired of uh, people... It's not tired. I just I don't want any more people getting more hurt than they can. If we can stop it, prevent it a little bit, make it quicker, make it more educated for someone to help them get out of the aircraft. Well, the vast majority of you that are listening to this, you have a warbird, you're an operator, you're running at a museum or wherever. The the thing is, air shows. Even though you might not be a performer at an air show, what Pumpkin's saying is that you're still displaying the airplane, you're arriving, you're departing the uh, the environment there of the aerial event. You've got a lot of people there who can help get you out of this airplane. Your own home airport would be a great place to have this delivered to. And the best part is this service is free. So God forbid Absolutely. you have an accident or you come down like a bag of hammers, as Wayne Boggs loves to say, this <laughs> yeah. document is going to help get, or, or video will help, the local authorities get you out of the airplane. It's just a no-brainer. You know, this is like putting your name on homework, right? You don't put your name on the homework. You don't get credit. It's going to be late. This is one of those no-brainers. Don't stub your toe inadvertently by not doing this. It's airshowsafety.com. Let's rewind just a little bit because when you were on the Snowbirds, uh, mm-hmm. you had an interesting, an interesting run on the Snowbirds. And I say that because... Unlike a lot of jet teams, the Snowbirds are flying airplanes uh, that would qualify to be vintage military airplanes. They've been around a long time, and you were Since one of the guys. Sixties. Yeah, you were one of the guys keeping that working. Talk to me about your time on the team and and maybe some of the lessons learned that are applicable to safety uh, of keeping an old airplane going. What was something you learned that uh, no doubt helped fuel your passion for air show safety and aviation safety in general? If you're even thinking about cutting the corners, don't ever cut the corners. Manuals are written by people that are smarter than us. They're not just a guideline. They're there for reasons for, for your safety and the safety of others. Um, you know, take pride in your work. Don't rush anything. You know, that's one of the things as a professional mechanic, FAA certified also now too, and from my snowboard time, you know, the worst thing you can do is rush through something and miss that one little thing. 
you know, um, as silly as it may sound, uh, FOD checks, you know, when you have the, a Warbird, a T6, or a nice chipmunk, you know what? Once in a while, if you're not going inverted all the time, but once in a while, have a look underneath your seat. You know, you'd, you'd be surprised what you find, pen, a wrench, you know, who knows, a flashlight. So granola bar. Term, That's mine. Granola you know? bar. Yeah. yeah. Granola well, bars time, everywhere. You know, you go, gosh, you must be hungry when you're flying. But no, it's uh, yeah, it, it's the rescue fog, food that falls yeah, apart over yeah, but, time. Exactly. But fog checks were a big yeah. deal. And it's still doing because, you know, you hit that turbulence in your chipmunk, even though you're level, and all of a sudden something pops up and your your eyes veer off. You're like, well, hey, what was that? And, you know, distraction is one of our items we try to avoid, you know, being safe. It's just trying to minimize distraction and minimize risk. Well, and you worked for the airlines for a long time. I mean, you undoubtedly saw this on commercial airliners as well. I want to bring up your wife because you you have a museum there uh, in the family. Your wife owns an FBO, and, and you're working on, I'm assuming, some of these airplanes that are in the museum even. Yeah, it was uh, funny you say that. Yesterday, um, Jay Pemberton, whose family has a great museum up in Spokane, flew down in an N3N open cockpit to come down to do check rides with our museum's steermen. And uh, yesterday I was working on it, filling the tires, doing pre-checks. But yes, I work on the steering for the museum. We have a couple of little other aircraft that were donated, uh, uh, vans and the Celerity that are going to be used for display. Um, I'm part-time with my wife. I work at a nuclear waste facility currently now. But yes, I was airlines. I worked for my wife for 13 years. I worked in maintenance control for SkyWest at headquarters and management. That was a lot of fun. Talk about safety phone calls and things that happen all the time. You name it. I've seen it. I've heard it. I've seen the pictures. It's just one word that sums it up for how I feel about safety. It's a passion of mine. Yeah. And I just want to pay it forward. And if if, if I can help someone uh, be safer, I did this. I'll tell you a little quick story. I was in Reno. Reno flew us down. We didn't charge anything. I said, you know what? Pay for our ticket, bring us down, buy us a hotel and a golf cart. We did 48 videos in three days. There you go. On the third day, after I did this guy's video on the first day, and then I might choke up here, so I'm going to throw it on you. Because <clears throat> it hit hard. On the third day, a guy comes up and says, I really appreciate what you're doing. I'm going to try to say this without choking up. He says, I had a dream last night, woke up in a cold sweat, and I had ditched my aircraft after a race, but I survived. And then the smoke cleared, and I was sitting in the ambulance, and the firefighters were bringing me over and talking to me. I looked at him, and I said, how in the heck did you get me out of that plane? It's a wreck. You know, it's, it's just, we watched your video on pumpkin me. And you hope that never happens, right? I mean, that's, yeah, that's the hope, yeah, is just, that it never happens. It but. If yeah, he if he exactly. hadn't have made the video, if he if he had not have gone through it, and even, you know, and this is the other point I wanted to bring up here. It's not so much the act of making the video for the fire department as it is for you to think about all of this as you are making the video. That is that is the other part of this that's so equally important is is thinking about these uncomfortable realities that when you accept the risk and you push that throttle up, uh, and you know, certainly if you have someone in the back seat. Uh, all of that comes into play, and this is something that you you just simply have to think about. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk a little bit further here about the museum and about your time in the museum because this this is critical. What should folks who fly these airplanes for a museum be thinking about before they go get in that airplane for the first flight of the year? Uh, you're a maintainer. You know what to look for. What are the common mistakes that people are going to leave out and not see before they go get back in the airplane? Obviously not following the checklist, you know, doing it. Oh, I did this. I've done it so many times. Again, complacently can hurt you. Um, it's it's a wellness check, you know, especially with a fabric aircraft like a Stearman. You know, if it's been stored for three, four months in a hangar, and even though the maintenance is not due till September for an annual, you know, you want to make sure nothing's been punctured or cracked or because canvas uh, Cloth airplanes can rip, can tear. 
You know, you never know someone might have bumped in a tool cart into the side of it. Just have a real good look. And you know what? You're getting in the aircraft, but pretend you're putting in your daughter or your son or your mom or your dad. Yeah. Treat every flight like that. Right. Check the uh, check the safety wire on all the common points, like the uh, fuel strain. Absolutely. You know, look, yep, absolutely. look in there. Make sure everything is safety wired the way that it should be, uh, and that where it where it needs to be. One of the other things um, that a mechanic told me, and I and I think it 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 may have been, it very well may have been a former snowbird, and I just I've never forgotten about this. Is he said check the big stuff, and I never thought about that. And but but so mm-hmm. so absolutely right. You know, we assume that everything is put back together after an annual properly. But he said, check the big stuff. Make sure that the big stuff, the stuff that absolutely should be there without a doubt, is there without a doubt. Absolutely. As yeah. silly as it is, I learned it a little while ago. Um, I checked the tire pressure on the steering yesterday. It was at 40 and needs to be 60 to 70. Because yeah. if not, you have a wheel shimmy. What does a wheel shimmy lead to? To get scared, disoriented, you know, well, a ground, ground loop for what? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. so good stuff. All right. One of the things I could say is if you're going to do the video, it takes 10 minutes of your life. Send it in. Yeah. And you don't have to edit it. I mean, that's the best part, right? Nope. So just we'll do it all. make the shots, take the shots that you need, hold your phone horizontally so it looks better on YouTube. And then, uh, yeah, go from there. And how can they get a hold of you there on the website? I'm sure your contact is all over it, but it's airshowsafety.com. <laughs> Right, and I airshow safety at gmail.com or snowbird, the number two letter A, snowbird two alpha at gmail.com. And if you're listening to this from Europe or anywhere in the world, we're also in Europe now and in Australia. One of the other things that's really great about airshowsafety.com is you have a list of safety idea contributions. You're building a list. And if you have one, an idea, maybe. It's the Amanda Switch from uh, one of your contributors who happens to just live down the road from me, Buck Roteman, a great performer and a great mechanic, uh, which automatically shuts off the smoke system in your airplane, and it's named uh, in honor of Amanda Franklin, who sadly uh, lost her life due to complications from an event. But uh, there are medical alert dog tags that are on there from another neighbor and friend, Skipper Heil. Uh, What about that PPS switch? that you've got on there. There's so many, so, you've got to go see them, but that's just another one. Yeah. And then pumpkins perimeter, that's a part the pumpkins power switch off. I thought it could be a, like in a drag car, it's a 90 degree turn where you could have a switch on the belly of the aircraft. If you have an aerobatic or tail drag or aircraft, it's very big. If it did turn off, at least it could kill the power. It was just an idea, something to, to think yeah. about and then pumpkins perimeter i did it and now a lot of places are using it for an air show you know google put your show center in the middle of your google maps and then type in fire hall and it'll show them all and you can email all my information to those people pasco uh, airport fire hall loves our system um and that's a great show. idea because oftentimes at a you know at a small county airport there's not crash fire and rescue people are thinking well i don't have anywhere to share this that though is a brilliant brilliant idea so it's a perimeter around the airports that you fly frequently you can send mm-hmm. it to them it'll pull it right up and you can send it to them boy that is not all accidents yeah because yeah. not all accidents happen at show center or at the airport yeah well but i mean they don't even have the response to get there uh, at a lot of these airfields, so but at least they mm-hmm. would should they show up. And you've got a lot of volunteer fire departments uh, today in rural uh, areas, both uh, in and around the United States and Canada, that would love to have something like this, a, a resource like this. And you know what? They're going to share it and study it uh, in a manner that uh, some of the larger departments simply might not have time for. But they've got to have the data. They have to have the information. And the only person who can get that uh, to them is you. So you've got to go video your own airplane, your own, your own extraction documents. And there are samples on there of what you need to send pumpkin, right? You betcha. And then if you hit under extraction videos or email us, we'll send it to you. There's CFR points when recording. It's the last red line before um, you see the list and CFR points when recording. It'll tell you right then and there it's a PDF and it'll tell you, you know, that's perfect. And if you already have this information, If you're a performer and you've already got it, go ahead and send it to Pumpkin. He can put it up there 
uh, on the website. A lot of you that are uh, frequent air show participants and performers should already have this. The International Council of Air Shows also maintains this uh, information. And you play well with ICAST. You share all of this stuff, I'm guessing, with them, too. Absolutely. And they've shared a bit with me. I'm a proud member of ICAST and uh, was one of the recipients of the START grant to help promote air show safety last year. And I'm allowed to say that, I've been told. <laughs> okay. And super, great. super proud of that. Yeah. And uh, we just, again, it's a mission and a passion. And we just want everybody to be safe. And like they say at work, be able to come home that night and see your family. Amen. Michelle Pelletier from airshowsafety.com. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it, Matt. This is Word Radio. Reminding you that radio engines don't leak oil. They just mark their territory. This is Word Radio. Tune in. Take off. And welcome back here to Warburg Radio, the last episode of Safety Month with Michelle Pelletier. Thank you so much for coming on, Michelle, and bringing up airshowsafety.com. What a great resource. Uh, if you've not already checked it out, just go in there and uh, take a look at it. You'll be glad that you did. I want to take just a, a few moments here as we wrap up uh, Safety Month to, again, thank uh, Tom Richard and to thank Doug Rosendahl for coming on the show and uh, for just helping fill in some of the gaps uh, that, that oftentimes uh, we don't think about. And this time of year, it's just so critical uh, that we that we do think about these things. Uh, the highlights to me, uh, one of them was what Michelle just said, and that is to send this document and this video that you're going to make uh, at airshowsafety.com. When you upload it, you can then use that pumpkin perimeter uh, device that he has right there. It's a it's a link that will show you all of the firehouses, all of the fire departments uh, within just a 10 nautical mile ring of your airport, which is where the vast majority of accidents happen. If you're on a practice flight, a rehearsal flight before an event, maybe it's a maintenance test flight. Uh, the likelihood uh, that your airport will have crash, fire and rescue, and I know this to be true because I know a lot of you, uh, is probably slim to none. It's probably going to be that department that is just off the airport that's going to uh, be responding in the event of an accident. So what a great idea and what a great resource. The other thing was that Tom Richard said uh, to do the lap when you take off. If you if you haven't listened to Tom's episode, go back and listen to it. And it's a simple discussion that he said he's when he departs an airport, you know, he makes a 360-degree orbit. He flies through the pattern, and then he departs on the downwind. I mean, that little bit right there, what a, what a great idea. When he arrives to the airport, makes the circle, he's looking for places to land. He, you know, should the engine quit, right? That's standard operating procedure. Just don't fly in and land. Take that opportunity. Make a ring around the airport. Look at where you're going to land should... God forbid the engine quit. Should you have to do that? I mean, that's one of those things that is just so easy to do. It takes, what does that take? Five minutes to do total, make an orbit around the airport. And then on that departure, you do it again. You make sure everything's normalized. You make sure nothing's going wrong uh, with the, uh, the airplane in flight. And then you continue on down to wherever you're going. Just great advice. And then looking back at what Doug Rosendahl said, Doug made a really, really good point. And that is simply that we're not inventing new ways to kill ourselves. And on the majority of these NTSB reports where there is a fatality, the word impromptu often follow or it, it comes in front of whatever, whatever led to that fatality. So don't do anything impromptu, impromptu, low level aerobatics, stuff like that is what's going to continue uh, to get us killed. So simply you know, don't do it. Let's just be responsible and elevate our safety culture here and, and just say right now, look, I'm, I'm not going to do that. You know, the airport, the airport that I fly at might be a lot like yours in that I'm often the only person operating in and out of that airport. Uh, might be the only person there flying that day. And if that's the case, these three things alone, uh, could be huge as far as getting you over 
the line at becoming a statistic. You know, there's so much value in what each of those folks drove home that I would encourage you to go back and not only participate with airshowsafety.com, but go back and re-listen to what Tom said and what Doug said and, and just bookmark these episodes. My commitment to you as a listener on Warbird Radio is that I'm going to go back and I'm going to pull some of the other episodes and continue to build up our archive for Safety Month and make all of our Safety Month shows available because we have a bunch of them. And we're going to put them under a tab uh, just so you can go back and listen to them all as a refresher course whenever uh, it might be. The bailout show, it's often a popular one. We've had a couple of them over the years. But just talking about the procedure uh, that, that you need to walk through in getting out of your own airplane, uh, that's a great, great show to listen to, and I'll make sure that that one is available. Uh, and some of the other ones that just have some wonderful, wonderful information in them, they all have those nuggets like what I was just talking about there. Every one of them does. I sure appreciate you. Listen, if you have an idea that you'd like to share with everyone as we wrap up Safety Month and we start flying again, please send me an email uh, right through Warbird Radio. You can just go in there and send it uh, through the contact page, and I'm going to share it, guaranteed. Corey Miller's our next guest. That is going to be a phenomenal show, and I look forward to getting that one right out. We're going to be talking about engines on the next show. The preservation of engines and what Corey is doing up there at Strix Aero to make some of the most incredible Allison engines and and other engines uh, that are on the market today. Just really, really great stuff. We'll be in touch real soon, like next week here on Warbird Radio. Thanks again. So long for now.